morning, everybody, or good afternoon. Hope everybody's doing well. Hi, Marina. Good to see you. Hi, Kathy. Eileen, nice to see you. Good to know that you are there, actually. <laughs> I'm going to call you later because I want to talk to you about a couple of things. So I think we can start. So welcome everybody from the East Coast, West Coast, North, South, everybody in France. Hello, everyone. Bonjour. Nice to see everybody. Bonjour. Oui. Vraiment bonjour. So greetings, everybody. So today we're going to explore the area of France known as the Dordogne. Uh, the weather today is pretty typical for this time of year, I would assume, right? You guys are a little wet. Uh, the weather is uh, nice, cool, but not so different than what we have outside in uh, in lovely New Jersey. Uh, just so you know, in terms of like the weather for the region uh, in the summer, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, it sits in a valley, so it, it gets pretty warm, but usually in the mid to upper 70s and evenings in the low 60s. Uh, when it gets hot, just plan a castle visit. Thick walls, nice and cool. It's beautiful. Uh, you can go swimming in rivers. You can go swimming in streams. You can go to the ocean. There's a lot to do in the summertime in the fall. Uh, and yeah, I was just going to say, and in the fall, uh, the fall's beautiful. Uh, to me, it's one of the best times to go. Uh, days of kind of Indian summer, uh, pretty typical. Uh, it's fairly dry in the summer, not a lot of rain. Uh, so a little bit about Nouvelle-Aquitaine. Uh, so this part of the region is located between the Loire Valley and the Pyrenees in the south. Uh, and there's a beautiful river that runs through it, the Dordogne. Uh, so that's how it gets its name. Uh, today, we're going to visit a beautiful town of uh, Poitiers. And we're also going to visit the cave of Lascaux, uh, which some of you may know. Uh, we'll be showing some wonderful hotels that you might not know. But we're sure that you guys are going to enjoy it. So, uh, so stick around. Uh, this region of Perigord, it dates back to the time of the Romans. So lots of history. Uh, I mean, we're talking about like fifth century BC to the fifth century AD, a uh, long, long time, a thousand years. Uh, and there are many other, re there's few other regions in France that can sum up more what draws people to France. Uh, so, incredibly rich food, great uh, history, uh, chateaus everywhere that you turn. Uh, it's a beautiful countryside, small villages. Uh, I'm a foodie. Uh, so I love, you know, the food that comes out of the region, uh, foie gras, duck, uh, wonderful olive oil but actually not olives and made out of nuts out of walnuts which the region is famous for so uh it's also a region that it's the roads are wonderful uh it's really great to go around by car uh to visit individual villages take stops uh it's really a wonderful thing to do uh for me there's nothing better than waking up in the morning and going to a food market uh, and seeing what life is like uh, uh, for the people that live there every single day. Uh, lots of meats and cheeses and fruits and it's an area also that's made, that's perfect for families. Uh, where I was talking earlier to my uh, last few days with everyone that's presenting today. And I was talking about what's it like for them as 
people that live in the region. And uh, it's a wonderful place for restaurants. And uh, in fact, with kids, they're welcoming children into restaurants without feeling too stressed about your kids being there. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pass this over to Johnny, and we're going to talk a little bit about how we enter into the region. Uh, Francesco, uh, our our webmaster. Uh, so if you would go on to the next slides, that would be great. Hello, everybody. Good morning. This is Johnny, and. Uh... Uh, yes, I cannot uh, disagree more than what uh, Tom say regarding the region, and uh, also is a region very easy to reach. Uh, you can take the train from Paris. Uh, it's a TGV, the TGV train uh, that brings you to Bordeaux. Or a short uh, ride. Uh, you can uh, reach uh, also by plane. Uh, the, there is an airport in Bordeaux uh, and also close to, uh, to Bordeaux, other, other possibilities. And obviously, car rental. If you like to uh, explore France from Paris to Bordeaux, it's a very nice ride and uh, it can be a, a very unique experience uh, getting to the region via, uh, with a car. Uh, next slide. Okay, you have the, the speaker of today, uh, and uh, there are uh, you will uh, learn a lot uh, because this is a really a very nice destination. And uh, stay with us uh, up to the end uh, because there are very nice prizes uh, offered by our uh, friends of uh, Aquitaine. And uh, as usual, our three hundred dollar coupon for the for your next booking with us. So I don't want to take more of your time. And uh, Tom, you can pass the microphone to the next speaker. Hey, Celine. Hello. So good to see you again. Good to see you, Tom. Yeah. So uh, so now this is the third, right? This is our third webinar. Uh, I'm I'm. I'm thrilled to, to, to show it, uh, to expose the region and the area to, to our, 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 our clients. So why don't we just, why don't we start? So some of you may have seen uh, this slide before, and then you may have seen some of the last, the next three slides. Uh, it's absolutely uh, a wonderful place to, 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 to visit and you guys are very lucky to live there. I hope you appreciate that. We do. Uh, so let's go on to the next. Maybe, maybe Tom, <clears throat> what, what we can say is that the Dordogne is one destination, a very touristic destination among the Nouvelle Aquitaine region. Uh, the present webinars were dedicated to Bordeaux. And Dordogne is two hours east of Bordeaux by train, by car. Um, it's a region that is also known under the name of Périgord. So some people, some travel agents may know Périgord better than Dordogne. Uh, Périgord is the formal name of the Dordogne uh, department, which is now the official name. And I think you gave a very good presentation of all what you can discover in the Dordogne, which is very um, authentic destination. And for us, it's a kind of a, a place where you live the real French life with indeed very good gastronomy, with history, culture, a lot of markets and a, a beautiful countryside. Um, so it's not a destination that people, American people know prioritary uh, in France, but each time they come there, when we bring some travel agents, journalists, tour operators, they really discover something they did not expect so it's uh and it's a really destination we love particularly uh in the in the region indeed so what you can see here is um typically this is the dordon river so the dordon is the name of the destination and it's also the, the name of the river and as you said there are a lot of outdoor possibilities like canoeing kayaking 
Um, but it's also a land full of history, prehistorical sites, as we will see, but also medieval villages and castles that date back from the um, 100 years war between the French and the English. Uh, they were fighting a lot for this land. And uh, we say each time the British build one castle and one bank of the Dordogne River, the French did the same on the other banks. And now we call this, this valley the Valley of the 1001 Castles, you know. And a lot of them are open to visitors, so it's really a um, very iconic historical destination. It is, absolutely. This so, castle so, has been very unique, yeah. Yeah, 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 I found it interesting. This is Josephine Baker. Exactly, it's called Chateau de Milan. Uh, it's very close to Sarla. Sarla is the main city in the Dordogne. And this is where Josephine Baker um, lived when she had all her uh, rainbow tribes, all the kids she adopted from all over the world. And she stayed there, I think, like uh, 15 years. And now it's, uh, for a few years now, it's a museum dedicated to Josephine. So the owner, um, she just reopened it as it was when Josephine lived there. And believe me, as an American, when you visit it, it's very, it's an, a very emotional visit. That shows that she was much more than a singer and uh, she was involved in the Second World War. She was a very generous lady. And, um, and the castle in itself is uh, very beautiful. Yeah, and mm -hmm. France just enveloped her in, in uh, they, she was loved by the French. Mm. And she loved and she loved friends. So mm. what's our next slide? So this is to show you another kind of castle that you can visit in the in the Dordogne region. So you see, it's uh, not the Renaissance style uh, Loire Valley castle, where it's castles that are older, that are defensive from the 11th, 12th, 13th century. And um, and that one, Chateau de Benac, you've got a very beautiful view on the Dordogne River, and uh, it's also a must-see site. Yeah. Next slide. Uh, this, and, and this, this is, is a beautiful town. Yeah, the city of Sarla. Sarla is really um, uh, it's called the jewel of the of the Perigord, the Dordogne. Uh, it's a city from the 15th century, and it has the very interesting specificity that it has been kept into its original um, uh, buildings and atmosphere. So it's it's really very well preserved and it's a very nice place where to stay also when you are discovering the Dordogne. Uh, it's it's a, also a must see site. You can visit the city by night, you know, with a, so it's very beautiful because they have still the old kind of lightning. And um, and it's a very typical uh, medieval city, which is very very nice, very well preserved. Just to give you an idea of the kind of hotels that we find in the Dordogne, we are not in big hotels. They're all kind of boutique hotels, but in very uh, original and old uh, style, like mansions, castles. So one is the Viology here, you've got Chateau de Vigier, close to Bergerac. Down is the domaine de Rochebois that has reopened last year, uh, and Chateau de la Lande. It's an example of uh, different accommodation that we can find. And that one is uh, Moulin du Roc, it's in the north of uh, the Dordogne, and it's a five-star hotel since uh, last year. Kind of such, place. Such, such beautiful properties, Celine. Just lovely. With the Michelin star chef. and uh, Yeah. You've been there, Tom? Yeah, yeah. Once. Quite a mm. while ago. Mm. And the next. Ah, now we're going to learn. This is just a little slide, but we're going to learn a lot more about Lasco uh, later on in the uh, in the presentation. So Lasco is obviously a most see site when you go to the Dordogne. I spoke about the medieval heritage, but we have a great prehistorical heritage in the Dordogne, which is UNESCO classified for the concentration of all the prehistorical sites that you can find there. And, um, and Lasco, our colleagues will tell you much more about it, but really it's a, a place that, that you have to visit when you go to the Dordogne, which is absolutely uh, remarkable. So maybe our colleagues from Lasco can talk more about it. 
Oh yeah, we have. Well, we will later on as we move as we move through the presentation. So the next slide. Okay, are we about to go through the Lasco part now? Yes. Right. We'll launch a video here. By the way, this is a wonderful presentation that that was just put together for us. It's great, beautiful. Oh, absolutely fascinating place because of its gripping discovery by four teenagers and their dog in 1940 during World War II, and its concentration of cave paintings dating back over 21,000 years. These works of art bear witness not only to the ingenuity of our ancestors but also to the dawn of human artistic awareness. Sadly, the French government had to close the original cave in 1963 in order to preserve it, but at the same time authorize the creation of a reproduction. And so it was that Lascaux II, the world's first replica, opened its doors some 40 years ago. Afterward, in order to offer an even more in-depth quality of visit, reveal the entire cave to the world, and preserve the original Cave Hill, Lascaux 4, the International Center for Cave Art, was inaugurated in December 2016. An architectural masterpiece designed by Norwegian architect Snohetta that now offers visitors more than 9,500 square yards of visitor experience. More than 400,000 visitors, over 20% of them foreign, visit Lascaux every year testifying to its universal appeal. Visiting Lascaux is connecting with our ancestors and celebrate their timeless creativity. It's a captivating place that transcends the boundaries of time and reminds us that art has always been a way for humankind to understand the world and leave an indelible trace of its existence. I'd like to thank you and invite you to discover Lascaux in pictures now, but I don't to know that you're welcome to come on a tour whenever you like. Lascaux is something to experience and a masterpiece you don't want to miss. We remain at your disposal to answer any questions you may have. That's great. Welcome to Lascaux 4. I'm Christian. Join great journey back in time 21,000 years ago during the last Ice Age. Today, I'm going to guide you through the so, one of the jewels of cave art listed as a World Heritage Site in 1979 by UNESCO. Visitors begin their adventure outside with a panoramic view of the Vezere Valley before entering the cave to discover its world-famous paintings. The time has come to visit this masterpiece. The artist painted and engraved 2,000 images in a cave just 750 feet long. Lascaux represents a total of two Chauvet caves or four Cosca caves. That's 10% of all French cave art concentrated in a single cave. If you turn round now, all around us at 360 degrees, a specific bestiary emerges on a natural white canvas of calcite. This monumental frieze 82 feet long, will give anyone entering the cave for the first time an aesthetic and visual shock. To perhaps organize all this mystery that is moving around us, the prehistoric people painted an imaginary animal close to the entrance, as if to introduce cave art. A hybrid with two horns, a hump, and a spotted body. Today, this chimera is called the unicorn, probably straight out of there. In the art of Lasco, only animal visible, especially horses, 355, the main animal theme, then aurochs, 87, and finally deer, 68. Here, there are no representations of landscape, no, no stars. Context doesn't exist in cave art, you'll never see it. 
Lasco is surprising in the size of the images. If you measure this bull from the tip of its horns to its tail, it measures 17 feet in length. In other words, you're looking at the largest representation of cave art in Europe. Another original feature of Lasco is its polychromy, the amount of color. Normally there are one or two colors, but here there are 13. As an extension of the first sector, calcite is still visible. It continues to shine and absorbs the explosion of colors. In this area, you will notice the same animal heading in a specific direction, the entrance or the floor, or painted in a circle. In cave art, you won't just see animals. There are also signs, dots, lines, geometric shapes, whose meaning is completely unknown to us. The art of Lascaux is probably organized, structured, and codified. For many generations, they painted horses in the same way. Small head, long neck, short legs, long tail, generation after generation. At the end of the gallery, an upside-down horse that hugs the wall perfectly seems to close off this part of the cave, where the art was probably designed to be seen by a large number of people. We are now going to move on to another world, where the figures and representations change. Now, a new universe awaits us, another world where the figures and representations change. The walls of the cave are now closer and actually embrace us. The painted and engraved figures become more discreet, more difficult to perceive. The artist's faces were glued to the wall. In this place, we perhaps enter a more mysterious universe. We leave behind the world of gigantism and stop raising our eyes to the sky to create an intimacy with the wall of the cave. You then look up towards a natural dome, where half of the Lasco images are enclosed. The main themes are close to the ground, then deer and finally horses. This explosion of figurative and abstract images swirls around a small hole that leads to a remote sector. In this part of the cave, away from everything, lies the only human representation at a depth of 20 feet. This image, half human, half animal, is in stark contrast to all the other graphic units in Lascaux. It is schematic, placed in a space that is difficult to access. It has a bird's head, lines to make the arms and body, and four fingers. Going back up, we reach the last decorated part of the cave, a corridor dominated by symmetry and perspective are always present. Remember, these nomadic people decided to follow an ancient tradition undertaken thousands of years ago by other cultures that preceded them. Enter a cave, explore the place, and then for a reason we can't understand today, painted and engraved on the walls of these caves from generation to generation. After a guided tour lasting around one hour, Visitors are free to explore the other areas of the museum at their own pace, using a digital tablet in their own language. In this way, they can learn more about Lasco and prehistoric art on contemporary art. As you will discover, they can wander through the Lasco workshop, the theater, the cinema, the Imagination Gallery, and the Immersion Room, which since last year immersed the visitors into the heart of prehistoric works that, for the first time, come to life before their very eyes. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation and that it has inspired you to invite your customers to explore our site. My colleagues will be happy to answer any questions you may have. That's great. Uh, I, I, I just want to let everybody know that the, the film was a little off, but what we're going to do is we're going to send it to everybody uh, at the presentation, so, and it'll also be on our website, so you'll see that uh, without any of this 
jumping around. Uh, Clemence, I, I, you can hear me. I don't know if you can. There's, uh, let's see, Francesco, uh, everyone's microphones are off. So if we can just Clemence, turn them oh, back. Yeah. Okay. It's, there it's we okay go. It's okay now. Thank you, everyone. You're welcome. So yeah, uh, to me, that's such an awe-inspiring thing to imagine that so many tens of thousands of years ago that people had this vision to actually paint uh, mm. and express these emotions that, uh, you know, we see in museums, but to see them in a, in this, in this way is incredible. Yeah. yeah, as you say, it's not only a museum, it's really an experience to, to live, I think so. So I'm very happy to, to see in the messages that a lot of people are coming to Dordogne in a few, few weeks for, for, for some of them. So it That's will right. be great to, to leave it and to come to, to see the, the painting. But I think I'm today with, um, with Pauline and, uh, and Noho, my, my colleagues are on the and the webinar too, and I think it, it's all the, the responsible of the, um, the manager of LASCO. So I think yeah. maybe they can do some, some, the video quality wasn't really <laughs> uh, great tonight. So I think if it's possible, maybe for them to explain a little bit the experience. Absolutely. Uh, people can live in, uh, in LASCO, it would be great. Yeah, let's turn on uh, Laurent and uh, Pauline's and Pauline. microphone. Yeah. Thank you. Francesca, great. It's okay. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, Pauline. <laughs> um, Hi, Hi. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a shame you couldn't really see uh, the all video properly, but um, we'll try to explain you quickly um, how it, uh, how you can visit LASCO. Uh, you obviously have... Um, different possibilities. Uh, you can come and in a guided tour or in a free tour with audio guide in several languages. And uh, you could do a guided tour for one hour, two hours. It really depends on what you want, the time you've got. Um, uh, the first part is guided in the cave, which is the exact reproduction of the original cave for the first time, because uh, the first replica called Lasco 2 um, was um, only, you could only see 40% uh, of the original cave. So with Lasco 4, for the first time, you are able to visit the entire cave. And then, as Clement was saying, after the cave, uh, you are able to visit what well, we call the museum because it's easier to understand, but it's not really a museum. It's it's really um, an an experience like uh, interactive experience. yeah interactive yeah. experience uh, where you can uh, go to the theater, the workshop, the cinema, and um, it's you will learn a bit more about Lasco, obviously, but also about prehistory in general. And you will learn uh, more about the link between contemporary art and um, cave art. So that's a very complete uh, experience to live. And, and 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 in terms of the experience itself, uh, in multiple languages. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the length of time it takes to to visit. Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, the, the guided tour is one hour, but afterwards people can make their own experience, <laughs> uh, their yeah. own visits. So it's a little bit, little bit difficult to, 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 to give a time to visit Lasco, but at least it's one hour to two hour and a half, uh, three hours sometimes. Celine, yeah. <laughs> I, I can imagine. To me, uh, to me it's, in Lasco, yeah. so it depends yeah. on the time. I would generally tend to think that it's somewhere between a visit of two to three hours, I think is the yeah, right. I think two hours, it's a good way to, to have a good idea of the experience of the guided tour plus experience in the museum. 
And the other thing that I also, it, that's very interesting for a lot of the, uh, of our advisors that are here with us today is to be able to understand that in fact, it can be privatized if you'd like. Yeah. Uh, there's a, uh, there's, you, you can enjoy a meal there uh, in the evening. Can you talk yeah, a little bit can. about the prestige tour that, that is, is offered? Yeah, exactly. I don't know, Pauline, if you want to explain it, but yes, you can do guided tour, private guided tour and prestige tour in the evening after the closing of the museum. So it's really a good experience and a private experience. And we can uh, finish it uh, with a special meal made by a uh, one-star Michelin uh, chef. So it's very... Uh, an exclusive experience in in Lasco we can do it so and as i understand that the menu is quite special too for that meal yeah <laughs> we have to come at this dead i show somebody who come before uh, rendezvous france uh, so it will be an uh, an opportunity to uh, to, yeah, to test it so it will be great yeah. great uh, so uh, forever ever with this <laughs> thank you Thank you. Uh, so what is our next, what's our next uh, presentation after Lasco? Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you so, so now, much. Thank now you. we're going to move to a beautiful town and we're going to introduce you to Agnès Hubert. Uh, uh, so welcome. Uh, Francesco, can you turn on the... Uh, the mic there we go yeah it's okay thank you so uh Hello. welcome I'm glad to have you here with us today so uh so this is on the on the road to santiago right on the camino de santiago yes we're just uh, located between paris and bordeaux quite in the middle and it's also on the road to uh, to santiago yeah it's uh... uh and francesco if you want we can you can start to move through the slides and here we are okay again <laughs> Yeah, this is a, just a general view. We can make it a, a quick into, into the slides because uh, after there is a, the, the video is a little bit uh, longer and we and I will give more maybe more details. So that's a nice terrace. Beautiful in cafes. Yeah, in the sunny Poitiers, not like today. Well, that's okay. So we're not very sunny in New, we're not very sunny in New Jersey. <laughs> This is the church Notre Dame la Grande, which is very uh, the, the jewel of uh, Romanesque art. And people are some people are coming to Poitiers sometimes only to see the church. But this is on a market day, so you don't see the facade very well. But you will see it uh, later. It, al it almost looks like a painting. Yeah, sometimes people tell me I live in a postcard, but uh, <laughs> in this kind of uh, picture. It's, I'm living in a real postcard, actually, with a little market. It's a very typical French. This is something else. It's on the Klein River. It's a, a part called La Ganguette Pictave. Pictave, it's because on Poitiers. And it's a place more for family, young people, because Poitiers is also a student uh, city where people can have uh, make a picnic, uh, have a glass of wine, of uh, beer, uh, there are also food trucks, um, concerts, etc. This is uh, the Baptistry Saint Jean. I will tell you more in a few minutes about it too. These are some uh, local cheese uh, like uh, Chabichou. We have a uh, lot of uh, goat cheese in the region and uh, next to Poitiers too. So some of my favorites. Ah, good. You come. You have to come next time. We have good mm. uh, cheese maker. This is the city all by night. Beautiful city hall. Mm. Next slide, Francesco. Ah, uh, the city hall is frozen. Mm. Coming. 
Uh, and this is the palace of uh, Eleanor of Kakitan. This is, uh, yeah, we can, uh, I, I will, I will tell more uh, during the video. We can, we can do it uh, uh, quick. It looks also like a, like a church, but it's not. This is the Moulin de Chassaigne. This is on the Clain uh, River next to the part we've seen just a few uh, slides ago uh, next to the Ganget Pictave. Such an interesting looking building. And here are a few pictures about the Mercure Hotel. So it's not a usual uh, Mercure Hotel. It's uh, located in, in an ancient uh, chapel. So very different and uh, right in the uh, middle of uh, the, the town in, um, uh, in the pedestrian area. So this is, I think, the beginning of the video. Um, yeah, let's go. So that's me again. So I'm still Agnès, I'm the promotion manager of, at the tourist office of Poitiers. And so I'm here and glad to uh, present you the assets of our destination. So as I told you before, we are located between Paris and uh, Bordeaux, one hour and 15 minutes with a fast train. And there is also a connection, a direct connection from Charles de Gaulle airport uh, in two hours. The city was called the city of 100 bells because it's a blessed of uh, heritage and has a charming mix between uh, history, heritage and French art of living. Uh, here you see our guide who will uh, that we follow uh, uh, her steps um, into the streets, the pedestrian areas of, uh, of Poitiers. Uh, when I talk about my city, I like to quote a journalist who describes Poitiers as old stones and new blood. So we begin with the old blood. And um, this, uh, this woman who are, that we are following is our special guide to, to, tonight, today. Uh, she's a queen, uh, she was queen of France, queen of England, uh, also mother of Richard the Lionheart uh, and Eleanor of Aquitaine. So we just enter into the church of Notre Dame la Grande that we've seen a few minutes ago with, uh, with the market. Um, here are a few stained glass uh, talking about, uh, uh, I think the video is going a little bit <laughs> Yeah, uh, for some reason, yeah. our, our connection today is very slow. Uh, no, it's it's uh, quick and slow, so I don't know. Now we are going, we are trying to enter uh, into the palace of uh, Eleanor of Aquitaine after a few um, uh, walk into the pedestrian street. So here Eleanor uh, shows us her palace. Um, with the uh, big uh, chimneys that you can you can see over there. There is also a tower that you can visit. It was the courtyard uh, until 2019. Now it's reopened to the public. We have made a big jump into the time into the Baptistry Saint Jean, with uh, which foundation are uh, from the fifth century. Now we are inside and uh, they are uh, very nice and in good shape. Uh, paintings from the Romanesque period, as well as a baptismal uh, a pool and uh, some sarcophagi. It's uh, uh, very famous and it's supposed to be the oldest Christian monument in Europe. Now we follow uh, running Eleanor going to the cathedral. Uh, the cathedral is the place where she was married um, with her second uh, um, husband with uh, her second spouse. So what, this is- uh, And yes, what year was this? Uh, so it was a uh, Henry II uh, Plantagenet who made her, uh, she, she was already queen of France and with this marriage, she also became queen of England. Uh, and they, they get married into this, uh, this cathedral. Uh, which is very, very big, uh, very uh, uh, imposant. Uh, there is a lovely clico uh, organ uh, that you can see over there. This is a stained glass where you can 
uh, see Eleanor from Aquitaine giving as a gift the stained glass to the, to the cathedral. Um, and we have discovered uh, maybe a few years ago, which I think it was in 2016, in a chapel next to the, to the cathedral, uh, 900 uh, square meters of painting that you can see over there, uh, the, the blue and the red part. Uh, I think the video has skipped this, uh, <laughs> this painting. So maybe when you <laughs> reload it, <laughs> where you can we see it, uh, in the, uh, it was on the top as, uh, of this chapel. Now we are going into the, the last church, which is Saint Radegonde. Uh, Radegund, uh, uh, she created the first uh, women abbey in Poitiers. She's a saint of, uh, of Poitiers, but uh, Eleonore is blocked on, um, on the door, so you can, we can go inside. This one is both uh, Romanesque and uh, Gothic. And um, uh, Radegund, she is, uh, there is a crypt. We are going, uh, following um, uh, Eleonore, she's getting out. Uh, Sandra de Gonde was buried uh, into this uh, this uh, chapel, this uh, this um, this church. Now we are going to the museum, the museum uh, Saint Croix, uh, which has an archaeological collection. Um, these are uh, Roman uh, uh, Roman building that we have found when the museum was, was created. Uh, there is an important uh, sculpture section uh, with the third uh, collection of uh, st uh, statues of Camille Claudel uh, in France. This is not Claudel, now it's Claudel. This is Le Baiser. We have La Valse. Uh, the, this is uh, Le Baiser. We have also the abandonment. Ad abandonment. Uh, some people are coming to Poitiers just to see this collection which is uh, very famous. There, we could see just before a sculpture of uh, Victor Hugo. She, this was, is she, a... was, she was the muse of, uh, of Rodin. She was the muse of Rodin, the lover of Rodin. She, her story was very, their story was very stormy. Uh, and she she ended uh, alone and- uh, Yes, sad, uh, sad ending. Crazy, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, during the war. Um, I've told from all the, all the stones now, we've been a little bit on young blood um, uh. and some uh, activities for children and families. We have also the second or third theme park uh, in France, depending on the year. It's called the Futuroscope uh, and the the attraction that you can see over there, it, it's called the Tornado Chaser, uh, had the, the prize, uh, the, the award from the best uh, the best attraction in the world uh, last year in Los, Los Angeles. So they were, were very proud of it. Um, there are 20, 25 uh, uh, dynamic attractions and 40, uh, 40 spots to visit. Uh, now we need uh, two, two days to visit uh, the Futuroscope. And, Here and it's, uh, uh, is it open year round? No, just it's in the only summer. closed on January. Okay. Uh, this is uh, again the Ganget Pita. It was uh, it was a place that was uh, very wild in Poitiers, and uh, where um, uh, Ganget's a place uh, to. Uh, just to chill, have a nice aperitif, a picnic, or, or eat. Here we see some other activities next to Poitiers. Uh, it's in Chauvigny. We have an activity that you can see just over there here called the Velo Rail, where you are uh, on, uh, on rails, uh, like on a, on a bicycle. And you can see also the, the countryside, uh, the nice rooms of the castle of uh, Chauvigny. There is also a, a show with uh, eagles, uh, in the ruins of the castle, so here that you can you can see over there. So many things to to see and to do for for family for couples. Here you see the the goat that are making uh, the 
the goat cheese you can also visit uh, this part they have special brushes for their massage as you can see over there um i would to have a second life in a uh, in a goat, goat. <laughs> because they're here you know classic music they have this kind of massage it seems to be very nice to be a, a goat in that uh, part of uh, of uh, Poitou Charente and uh, Nouvelle Aquitaine. Uh, here, it's about the, the market we've told uh, just before. That's a specialty of Poitiers. These are special macaroons that uh, Eleonore of Aquitaine uh, <laughs> did not taste. But actually, I have to say, it's not the real Eleonore from Aquitaine. It's my colleague from the group department, and she liked the macaroon. So we in France, we have wine like uh, everywhere uh, our wines are not bad too we have a lot of uh, um, uh, biological uh, wines and um, a lot of people don't know them and it can be a good connection between uh, Chateau de la Loire and uh, the Bordeaux region we have some uh, special handicrafts as you can see over there this is the last uh, 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 one of the four or five last uh, um, handicrafts of umbrella in Poitiers, the fifth uh, generation. So all uh, handmade uh, with uh, all the structures. This is a little bit of uh, the pedestrian area and the shopping center and the uh, old town of, um, of Poitiers. So it can be a nice stop between Paris and, and Bordeaux lot of restaurants and terrace for sure. Uh, this is the, the town hall again. And now we'll end with the uh, famous Hotel Mercure. It's uh, It was um, uh, the constant, uh, how do you say? The consecrated church. It's difficult for uh, us French people. Uh, this with chapel. And after a while, it became the archive of the county. That's why the restaurant is called the Archive, that you can see over there. And the hotel is an Hotel Mercure, but as you can see, very uh, uh, un unusual, uh, atypical. Uh, there are 50 rooms with one very atypical suite that you can see over there, which is located in the old uh, bell tower. And uh, other mezzanine rooms and some standard rooms uh, too. Uh, voilà, this is the end of my presentation. I hope that I could convince you <laughs> to come to Poitiers and that it could be a good option for your clients, uh, especially for repeaters and people who already know Paris and uh, the most famous places in France, but who want to be closer to the French uh, art de vivre. Uh, Poitiers is more a destination for, you know, connoisseurs. So... Eleonore is trying to, to leave. I don't know what happened to the, the video right now. Um, so as I told you before, uh, it's my colleague Amélie from the group department who would be uh, your contact for your reservation. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, please do not hesitate to, to contact me. I would be happy to, to share. And um, I have the key, so do not, uh, do not hesitate. Uh, Agnes, thank you very much. Uh, it, it's such a beautiful, small city that is very authentic and lots of choices and beautiful places to stay. Uh, so I really thank you for uh, for walking us through this uh, through the through the town. And I, I again, I, I the 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 film will be uh, available, and we will send it to everyone. Who has uh, who's attended the webinar today? So yeah, yeah. I, just... I was saying uh, at the beginning that uh, traveling from Paris to uh, Bordeaux, you pass by uh, very nice location, uh, starting from Orléans and then tour for the Loire Valley uh, Castle and then Poitiers, which is exactly on the middle of the road to end in Bordeaux. It's a really, really a great experience for someone that wants to really, for some client that wants to travel by car, is an experience, a unique experience. And, uh, yeah, by car or by train and, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, we're saying by car or by train, but because we are lucky, we are between Paris and Bordeaux, so two big cities. So it means the connection uh, between these two big cities, are, uh, I don't know, there are trains maybe every uh, one and a half uh, hour or two hours sometimes, and they all stopped in Poitiers actually. So it can be a, a, a nice stop, a nice option, different from Paris, different from Bordeaux, and cheaper as well. There you go. Good value. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what's our next? So now we're, we are going to visit a wonderful property uh, called Le Glicine, and it has a one-star Michelin restaurant as well on the property. Uh, so, and uh, Sylvain, uh, how are you today? Fine, fine. Hello, everybody. Good. <laughs> so I'm, Good. I'm the receptionist of the... Uh, in uh, Leglisine Hotel and Spa, and uh, we we made um, a video to to show uh, how how our how our our hotel is beautiful. Voilà. <laughs> that, that's easy. You're 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 you have a wonderful wonderful property, uh, and and uh, can we talk a little bit about where it's located? Uh, well, yes, it's located in Les Aisy. It's the capital of uh, of the prehistory in France. It's uh, the town. Uh, there are many. Uh, there is a prehistoric museum, the uh, the world museum of prehistory. Uh, if there, there is a, a little river called the, the La Vézère, which is uh, just there, and uh, there are many places uh, to to visit. Some caves uh, around, uh, some castles. It's a very nice place. And uh, and you also run the restaurant at Lesco, correct? Exactly, exactly. Not me personally, but uh, the owner, okay. the owner Pascal Lombard, is uh, runs to the the restaurant at uh, at Lesco. Okay, yes. Great. Uh, can we uh, launch the video? Yes. This oh, this is this runs better than the last few. The hotel bed is for me. Can we start from the beginning, Francesco? With a capacity of twenty-five rooms, lodges in our park, of three hectares park, you will find comfort and space during your stay for sure. The actual owner, the mission start chef Pascal Lombard, will invite you to share his universe. You want to know how is a typical day in our house? So let's discover it together. First step is stop in our bistro for lunch under our veranda or row tables, welcoming you to eat generous and sincere cuisine in a family atmosphere where chefs and guests share the same space. After lunch, what about the moment of rest and relaxation? Our spa welcomes you in a heaven of tranquility. Are waiting for you in a wellness area. In the afternoon, our bar, in the ambience and welcoming design, will provide you a quiet space. In warm days, the outside lounge will be open with an incredible view on the park. For dinner, in the art of our home, the 1862 gastronomic restaurant on Minchin Star will surprise you with delicate and innovative flavors dedicated to our Epicurean guests. Embellished with our large selection of French fine wines. Hoping to see you soon. Hotel Le Glissin, another version of hospitality. Again, this the uh, for some reason our, our the video on Zoom today was not working as it normally does. Uh, I have a question for you, Sylvain. Uh, you're located in the countryside. Uh, traveling to your property, would you need a car? 
I know to to travel in a property. Yes, uh, <clears throat> we in there is a we, you you need a car. It's possible by um by taxi too. There are some trains uh, because uh, Les Aix is a town uh, now uh, in Dordogne. Yeah, so there is a train station which is at fifty of one hundred two hundred meters from the hotel. So it's easy from Bordeaux, for example, or for uh, from Agen. You you can come uh, and there is a uh, nearly one hour of uh, of, tra of travel to to and come are there. You open, and are you open year round? Um, can you repeat? Are you open all all year? Yes, a lot. The... Actually, no, it's a lot. No, at the moment, uh, it's a low season, so we are closed on uh, Mondays and Tuesday. But um, uh, beginning uh, on the twenty seventh of March, we are open seven days. Uh, Seven days uh, a week. Seven days a week, and and the, and the and that's both for the the restaurant and the hotel. Exactly. Hello. for the gastronomic restaurant, it's only open for the dinner, but it's it's not open now. It will uh, open on the fifth of April, and uh, until the, the 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 end of the season, it means until the tenth of November. But uh, the gastronomic restaurant, it's only for dinner. And uh, the, at midday, it's uh, only the bistro, which is open. Voilà. Mm -hmm. At the moment, the bistro is open uh, on the, for the lunch and dinner. But uh, at the, on the 5th of April, the, the gastronomic restaurant will open for dinner and the, the bistro only for, for lunch. And again, how many rooms were there on the property? 25 rooms, so it goes from a classic room, uh, which is on the courtyard. And um, after we've got some uh, rooms uh, um, with view on the park and some lodges, which are uh, in, in the park, in the park of three hectares, where, uh, where, where it's possible to have a beautiful terrace and you are not in a building next to the park, you are in the park. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's very cool too. Thank you. Uh, Johnny. Uh, we're going to pass this now back to you. Uh, I think we have some prizes to give out. Yes. Uh, so uh, thank you for uh, your attendance today. And uh, we are preparing other webinar coming up in the next uh, weeks. So stay tuned with us. And uh, we will uh, obviously notify you about the dates and the time. And uh, mm -hmm. for today, we have, as usual, the, our three prize, the $300 uh, coupon uh, goes to uh, uh, Barbara Risdon. Uh, Barbara. Hi, Barbara. Congratulations. congratulations. Then you have the one night stay at the uh, Glycine Hotel mm -hmm. uh, with the, is a, uh, Michelin restaurant and the dinner at the Michelin restaurant goes to uh, uh, Kelsey Ebner. Uh, Kelsey, congratulations uh, for the for the winning. And uh, the night stay at the Mercure and the dinner at the Alice Archive. Uh, and a guided tour to Poirier to uh, goes to Lucille Pucciarelli. So Lucille, uh, congratulations. Congratulations to everybody, and uh, thank you again for your attention. Thanks, thanks everybody. Uh, have a great rest of the week, and we will see you soon. Thanks for everybody helping us to to put this together. We couldn't have done it without you. Thank you. Thank you. A bientôt. A bientôt. A bientôt.